Hey, welcome to the Kevin Soda channel. I'm uh, talking to you, not from the porch today, but from my bed, in recognition that many people are still dying. Uh, in reading Jim High Hightower's most recent uh, letter, I find the following a statement. The show goes on. Trump ap approach to our people's COVID-19 nightmare with the CDC forcing up to 175,000 reported U.S. dead by mid-August has not merely been incompetent, but also bizarrely nonchalant. It seems inexplicable for a, a president, unless, excuse my cynicism, Trump doesn't actually want to defeat a virus that is providing so useful um, cover in achieving his career-long goal of defeating economics and democracy in America, or economic democracy in America. In fact, Trump, along with a Washington army of corporate lobbyists and a, the usual gaggle of uh, pusillanimous GOP lawmakers, is presently mounting a furious campaign in Congress to let corporations literally get away with murder, using the health crisis as their Trojan horse. As a condition for allowing a desperately uh, needed relief package, uh, they are demanding and that includes the cohorts in the GOP Senate, are demanding a blanket corporate exemption from lawsuits when workers, customers, or others get sick or die from COVID infections, resulting from a corporation's profit-driven actions or carelessness. That reads negligence, such as forcing employees to return to infested workplaces. This is part of an overall war on the workers that has been non-stop and should leave us all sick. I'll talk more about that later. You've got to give the business some confidence here that if something happens, you can't throw big lawsuits at them, Well, Larry Kudlow, Trump's corporation's biggest economic advisor. Gosh, Larry, thanks for your little morality homily, but what about giving workers some confidence that if something happens... Something happens, death for example, they and their families retain a basic civil right to pursue justice. Immunity from lawsuits not only those by workers, but also by consumers, small business suppliers, communities, environmentalists, and any and all other harm by corporate malfeasance has long been the wet dream of giant corporations, CEOs, and financial people. It will be a huge structural breakthrough for corporate supremacy if they can slide this COVID exemption into any new law created by the Senate whenever they get off their three or four week vacation. Indeed, Trump says he has ordered federal agencies to find ways to make his COVID deregulation moves totally permanent. Even the attempt to grant preemptive legal amnesty for business wrongdoing that sickens, robs, and kills reveals the extreme threat this regime poses to basic morality and to America's democratic aspirations and our lives. What's coming out of corporate America in this Senate or White House is no longer just business as usual, but a new level of ruthless, inhumane greed. Okay, I'm speaking to you uh, from my bed. I'm simulating a sick person. If I actually had COVID, you would probably know my face would be bluish color. Um, and I'd be coughing and in pain. Let me tell you what's happened under uh, Trump and the National Labor Relations Board, which is part of the Franklin Roosevelt New Deal reforms. Uh, the intention of having a National Labor Relations Board was intended to prove, provide excuse me, the nation a basic framework for protecting and promoting the collective rights of workers to unite for improving their pay, benefits, and working conditions. It worked for 40 years, up until about 1980, when Reagan got elected. 
Okay. By 1980, though, corporate lobbyists, politicians, and courts had begun loosening the bolts of this democratic structure, causing a drastic decline in worker power and persistent rise in economic inequality. Now the highest in U.S. history. Are you going to put up with this anymore, America? Are we going to have to get out during the middle of COVID and protests and take over elections? Then along came Trump with bolt cutters and white bolt, cu- bolt cutters and white hot acetylene torch, working with practically no public exposure. Exposure. Uh, Trump had and his right uh, far right anti worker acolytes have, in short order, mangled the NLRB's structures, transforming it into instead of the National Labor Relations Board into no labor rights board. Trump has neglected to replace two Obama appointees to the five-person panel, and the board now operates with three members, all appointed by Reagan, I mean, excuse me, Trump, all white males, all Republicans, and all corporate ideologues. For a signifier of their damage, consider what that when Trump took office, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce had a wish list of 10 NLRB fixes to strip workers of their rights and increase executive uh, suite control of America's workplaces. Only three years later, three years later, last year, Trump was 10 for 10, having rubber, rubber stamped, excuse me, rubber stamped the chamber's entire agenda. How about that? Rubber stamped the entire agenda of one group of people who has not been representing the small um and medium-sized corporations of America. Okay, they forced more disputes into corporate-run arbitration rather than engaging in open bargaining with employees. I've been a victim of this. Allowing executives to gag employees by banning them from talking with each other about internal investigations into corporate violations of worker rights and other work-related issues. This has happened to me. Prevent, it's probably happened to you or family member. Preventing employees from using cafeterias and other open areas um, or spaces in the company to discuss workplace matters. Expanding the management rights to let bosses make unilateral changes that undermine the collective bargaining process. That's happened in my brother's school out in western Kansas. Denying a worker access to the company's email system to communicate with coworkers about workplace issues. This happened to me. Permitting bosses to fire workers who use offensive language about the bosses. Emboldened by their successes at incrementally rigging labor rules, Trump and co. moved to impose wholesale corporate control. In May, under the guise of rescuing America from COVID crisis, Trump issued an executive order directing every federal agency to ignore uh, basic rules uh, that inhibit excuse me, inhibit corporate uh, interest from returning properly to full production. This blanket directive announces to the industrial leaders and Trump congressional capos that henceforth it is open season on workers' safeguards by giving green light to public officials and bosses to rush open the national nation's commercial swirl. The order amounted to a death sentence for thousands of America since spring. Not consulted along the way was the virus itself, which promptly exploded with renewed ferocity that we're experiencing right now and will continue into next year. In another ploy, Trump's NLRB sided with major corporate chieftains in a crude power play to sweep sweep away or sweep aside the core rights of workers to form unions. Early this year, a wide range of workers, including some Amazon warehouse trader Joe Supermarkets and others, uh, cracked down and fired the labor organizers with no cause. And uh, this has been going on uh, in the last three years. Uh, it has been gaining ground since 1980, about the time Reagan was elected, but it started late in the 70s. Uh, worse, OSHA has been closed down. Uh, they have 50 uh, people to inspect uh, thousands of locations in America. Uh, OSHA was set up to protect workers and provide good, safe 
uh, working conditions. They are a partner of the uh, National Labor Relations Board. Okay, we have to make sure that uh, the new government, if it's not going to be Trump this next year, follows American laws, puts all this stuff back under regulation, and gets the National Labor Relations Board really helping them, Americans for a change. Joe Biden and Harris uh, must come through on this. If not, get out in the streets and demand change this 2020 and 2021. I'm going to pretend I'm sick here, just uh, in case I ever do get sick. I would like to lay down. In any case, uh, I'm just red-faced because I'm angry about how workers are treated in America. Let's not let this bad stuff happen anymore. Make America a place where you can work and feel safe. All right, this is Kevin Soda, and this is the Kevin Soda Channel. Thank you for watching.